Okay, in this video we're going to talk, talk about solar system, things you should think about, things you should know before you start thinking about getting a solar system. Number one, uh, if you're going to put a solar system up on your roof, have a roofer help you do it so you don't have um, leaks in your roofing later on. Um, there's a certain way to do it and a roofer would help you bestly to do this. Um, if you had an option to put them on your backyard, like us down here in our backyard, that's an option, but you're gonna have to look at it. Up here, it's kind of halfway hidden. Um, you're not looking at it. If you, if you have the room or a big field, I would put them on the ground, just because the maintenance and everything up here on the roof is kind of kind of tough. Anyway, so um, on your roof or your, your ground array, whatever you're gonna do, get as many panels as you can you know, and, and, you know, set it up so you can, you know, do your combiner boxes and everything and, and figure out how many. But the, the bigger the panel, like these are all 550 watts each. So this little corner, that little one right there in the bottom right corner, that's 550 watts per hour when the sun's shining on it. So each one of those, 30 of them, 32 of them actually, um, there's 30 here. We have two more um, that are not on this side. But that group right there of eight will produce 4,800 watts per hour in the summer. In the winter, about half of that probably. Um, anyway, so in the winter, the more of those you have, the better you are. Okay? So that's going to be the panel. That's the, the bigger the panels, the better you're going to do. Don't go buy 130 watt used panels, 250 watt used panels. Go buy new panels. They're not that expensive. I mean, they, they are expensive, but you're going to be much happier with a brand new panel that is, you know, like 500 watts, 550 watts, 750 watts. Um, the two-sided panels, obviously you don't put those on a roof. A two-sided panel would go out in your yard and have um, a reflection on the backside to like white rock or something that would, you know, in the summer lift that light back into the back of the panel. Those are dual-sided panels. These I have here are single-sided, mono, I think mono, bios anyway they're one-sided um, but they're 550 watts each one of those I think is just under four feet wide and about six and a half or seven feet tall something like that if I remember right so that's the panels okay so let's go talk about the main options inside with the inverters All right now we're inside we're looking at inverters now there's three basic systems you can put in a house you have a standalone um, inverter system, so like off-grid, um, where in those that case you would have batteries, and your solar panels basically do all the charging, and then your batteries keep the inverter running at night. Okay, and then you might have to have, or you would probably have to have a generator. So on the on the cloudy days, when you don't have you know snow up on your roof or whatever, and your solar panels aren't producing any power to charge these batteries, you have to run a generator to to heat these up that's that's off-grid okay and then there is um, net metering net metering is where you have panels up on the roof you have one um, inverter that goes out and charges commercial uh, puts the power back to commercial power and then they give you a credit to go against your power bill okay so in the summer you get credit and in the winter basically the first couple months probably you'll get free power and by the fourth month you're paying back to your regular your regular charge basically um, and then there is a hybrid system which is what this is this is a hybrid um, 18,000 watt inverter I have charge controllers down here so the power comes from the PV input okay right PV so the solar panels up on the roof PV come in and they hit these charge controllers then out of the charge controllers, um, they all come into a bus bar, like this. Those then, so the PV controllers, or the charge controllers come up to these bus bars, out of the bus bar through a switch, and they charge these batteries, okay? And out of the batteries, coming up this side, this is DC power coming into the input of this inverter. Then the inverter creates power, sends it out these lines right here, into the sub panel 
which is feeding all the stuff in the house, okay? Um, so for our system, we have the sub panel, which is our hot tub, our shop, our well, basically everything in the house except for over there in the commercial power, we have our oven, our dryer, and our um, dishwasher, mainly because those are things we run at night and it would drain these batteries and they wouldn't last all night. So how a hybrid inverter works is you have power that comes out of your commercial power comes in to the input of this. This has a automatic charging system in it. So when the, the monitors the batteries, monitors the battery level down here. And then once the batteries get low, like right now they're on one, I mean, they're, they're almost dying because it's foggy out. You saw the panels outside. When those get low enough, this will automatically flip over a transfer switch and start pushing DC power out this the other direction and start charging these batteries. It'll still work this way too, so if the sun comes out, it'll take power this way and charge the batteries. So it'll do it both ways at the same time. But when this switches, it then pushes power output, because this is our, our 110, our 110 and our neutral that are going to this panel. So it actually switches the transfer switch and starts sending power that's coming from commercial in, sends it right back out to that. And then it also sends DC power out to charge these batteries at the same time. That's a hybrid inverter, okay? Which is what we have. Now, the, if I was to do this again, or add on to this, what I would do is I would leave this system like this. Um, let me back up a little bit. In the summertime, our panels, the 30 panels, 32 panels we have up on the roof, these four power charge controllers, Basically, they charge these batteries up by 9.30 in the morning. 10, let's say 10 o'clock in the morning. So from 10 o'clock till 4 o'clock, I am throwing power away. It just, it doesn't get, don't, I don't save it because the batteries are full. It's just gone. So in the summer, I could take two of my arrays up there, right? Two, two of them, put a transfer switch on them, send that power then up to a net metering, another inverter, a separate inverter, send it to another inverter and sell power back to PGE, my commercial power company, and get credit. So in the winter, um, when I get my bill, because like I said, I still have the oven in it and all that stuff, and then when the this kicks in commercial-wise, it starts using power to you know charge these. But in the winter time, if I or in the summertime, if I had two of my arrays, which would be 9,000 watts an hour, selling back to the commercial power company, which I, I'm thinking I might do this, but it would give me credit so in the wintertime I would have the ability to you know, not be paying the power bills as high as we are in the winter. Anyway, it's, that, is, yeah, that is probably the only thing I would change in our system. Like I said, this is a hybrid system. It works great. The only thing I would change is I would put another inverter in it, a transfer um, switch for my for my two of my arrays to go to the other inverter and just sell back to commercial power. Um, people have asked me why I didn't go with the EG4 or why I went with this model. Um, again, this is an 18,000 watt output. It'll run 52,000 watts for just like two minutes. So like we have this hooked to our shop. So out in the shop, I have um, drill presses and table saws and whatnot. So when you start those motors up, it draws more power than, you know, once it starts, it drops down your power. So this will run 52,000 watts for that two minutes to start those motors. And then a constant 18,000 if, if it's needed. Like right now, it's only producing, using 26% of its capability to run whatever's in the house running right now and it's it's middle of december right now so it's running heaters and the pellet stove and you know of course all the other computers and everything else that are running in the house um but it is it is it's it's, it's a good system it's a sun gold power um but i would definitely i would definitely set it up so i had a, a hybrid system with the ability in the summer to switch over and have a whole nother system that's selling net metering power back to the commercial power company um anyway guys that is my little my little video on 
solar power for the home, the three ways you can do it. Um, again, probably the most important is to have as many panels as you can get and as high a uh, output on those panels. Like I said, don't waste money on buying a 320 watt panel that's used to go out and actually buy big panels that, that will actually produce some power. Um, because in the winter time you're going to need it. In the summer, not. But in the winter time, you're going to need more panels to catch more of that sun ray to create more power. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Have a great day.